Hello and welcome to the Anisonia Capital Global Opportunities Portfolio Update for September 2024. Uh, this is our disclaimer. Uh, please read it at your leisure to move forward. I will take it as read. So uh, this is the long-term performance of the portfolio since inception. Um, as you can see, the uh, long-term performance is still in place, um, delivering 15.4% per annum versus the index or our benchmark at 14.3% per annum. However, as I've mentioned in uh, in, in previous updates, the, uh, the recent performance of the last couple of quarters has been challenged by the market. Um, where from about March, April 2024, you've seen the uh, performance gap between the portfolio and the uh, index close a bit uh, because the portfolio has not been exposed to several uh, mega cap um, mega cap equities that are that are uh, driving or that are running on on strong momentum driven driven by the uh, the AI theme um, in in particular um, uh, Apple, Nvidia. Uh, Broadcom and and Tesla. Uh, in saying that, um, uh, this uh, this this performance uh, differential seems to be closing a little bit, um, and I'm pleased to say that uh, over the nearer term, uh, the portfolio outperformed the market in September uh, with a return of uh, plus 0.2 versus the market down 0 0.3. Um, uh, and uh, October is looking strong with um, with uh, the uh, reporting season in place. We've had strong results for. Uh, for uh, JP Morgan um, and for Taiwan Semiconductors, uh, and also um, Tesla has basically had a, a poor result, uh, which is one of the stocks that basically we haven't been exposed to that's been running on on strong momentum. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, over the long run, our five year performance is still outperforming, and since inception, we're up fifteen point four percent per annum versus four, the market fourteen point three. Uh, so outperforming still and delivering to our objective of uh, outperforming on a rolling five-year basis. Um, the stock for today, oh, sorry, I should go back. Uh, I apologize about that. Uh, so performance over the, uh, sorry, uh, trading over the quarter. Um, so over the quarter, we uh, exited Shell um, and uh, reduced our exposure to Taiwan, Taiwan Semiconductors, or basically just bringing that back to uh, to target, given a strong outperformance. And the same with Brookfield, uh, we basically reduced that back to target. Um, we also deployed some cash, increasing our weight to Alphabet or Google um, and to Amazon. So at the end of September, uh, the portfolio had around 13, or well, had 13 stocks and around 9% cash. So we're still running relatively defensively with around, uh, with around 9% cash. And generally, if the market continues to melt up, um, we will probably be increasing that, uh, that level of cash we are, uh, continue to struggle to see uh, or justify the current valuation in, in the market with the S&P 500 trading on a 2025 PR of over 21 times. Um, and uh, obviously with um, with the likelihood of a uh, of a Trump win um, and, and looser fiscal policy, we've seen um, uh, we've seen um, US uh, US yields back up. Uh, so 10-year yields are now over around 4.5%, basically on the outlook of, uh, of looser fiscal policy and, and a shallower uh, easing cycle for interest rates. Uh, and also uh, the US dollar has strengthened as well. So these are headwinds for, for the markets. Um, so as I said, it's a, it's a stock pickers market, but um, you know we're just not seeing pervasive value in the market at the moment. So um, with respect to the uh, the stock of the month, uh, I thought I'd revisit Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Um, this stock we put into the portfolio, I think early 2023, I think around February, March, at around $80 a share. It's now trading around uh, $200 a share. Um, so this is our uh, NVIDIA proxy um, in, in the sense that uh, Taiwan Semiconductors is the world's largest computer chip maker. It's leveraged to the AI theme, um, as is NVIDIA and uh, some of the other stocks that we don't own, which we don't see value in. Um, but in saying that, um, it uh, it supplies or, or makes the chips uh, to order for uh, you know companies like Apple, uh, AMD, NVIDIA, Qualcomm. Qualcomm obviously supplies the computer chips for uh, Apple's iPhones. Um, so a lot of these companies don't make their own computer chips. They basically order them um, uh, from TSMC, uh, who make them to the to design. And the US only makes about 12% of the computer chips that they use. Um, so effectively, 
Uh, it's regardless in the end of who wins the uh, race to supply the AI, mic the AI market. Um, uh, TSMC will likely be the uh, the company making the chips for uh, for that uh, for that uh, for that company. Um, again, very very strong pricing, uh, very very strong uh, demand for for products. Uh, strong pricing power, supporting margins around seventy percent. Um, at the moment, which are likely to actually expand with the supply demand outlook, um, uh, TSMC is also basically spending a lot of money to uh, to uh, to increase supply, and in doing so, also defray, I guess, its uh, geopolitical risk. Um, uh, we're essentially, uh, you know, it's, it's Taiwanese based, um, and uh, obviously, you've had the recent uh, um, invasion. Of, well, not recent, but you've had the invasion of of Taiwan from China, um, which is obviously. Uh, you know, causing some geopolitical issues and uh, they're looking to basically diversify their production globally and spending a lot of money in doing that. Um, again, as I mentioned before, uh, there's value in this stock, even though it's basically, you know, rallied from, you know, 80, uh, $80 since we had it to uh, to around 200. Um, essentially, um, when you roll the valuations forward and the, the strength of the, uh, the strength of the uh, the market that we've seen has basically sort of justified that uh, share price increase. It's only trading on a multiple of 22 and a half times in 2025 um, versus a, a um, an S&P 500 average of 21 times. Um, it's, it's growth outlook is uh, is far, far superior. Um, and uh, it also pays a, uh, a small dividend. It's currently on a 1.3% dividend yield. And obviously it's far more attractive than in NVIDIA, which is trading on 36.3 times, 2025 PER. Uh, so essentially, with all our work, uh, we've basically rolled the valuation forward to around $235 a share, which is our which is our target, which is about 15 or 16% higher than uh, than uh, than the current share price. Um, uh, and uh, this has been a great stock for the portfolio and helped to basically shelter us from, uh, um, you know, not owning Apple and NVIDIA, um, which are customers, which are trading uh, on, uh, on you know, values that we just can't justify paying, um, you know, fundamentally. Um, so anyway, that is the update for uh, September. Uh, as I said, October is hopefully, uh, well, is so far is looking good. Uh, we hope that it'll be another strong month. Um, and I will deliver the uh, the outlook or the, uh, the, um, the report for that in a few weeks. Uh, as always, uh, our um, contact details are on the front page here. Uh, Tony and myself, our mobile numbers or our email addresses, uh, please feel free to contact us if you uh, wish to have a chat or have any questions or contact us by the uh, inquiries um, inquiries line on our, um, on our website. Uh, until uh, next month, uh, we will see you then.